Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a game which a lot of PC players will want to play on their own personal computers. We are going to be taking a look at Red Dead Redemption on the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3. So in the past few builds of RPCS3, they have made some fairly massive strides towards this game's perfect emulation. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest, most volatile and experimental build of this PlayStation emulator. Let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at it right now. So here we go, I have Demon Souls and Red Dead Redemption. As you can see, I'm just going to look at my settings that I'm going to be using. I'm using Recompiler for my PPU decoder and I'm using Recompiler for also for my SPU decoder. I'm going to leave my SPU threads at Auto and I'm not going to change any other settings as these are the recommended settings that I was told to use by one of the developers of this emulator. Coming across to our GPU tab, this is where I have changed some things. I'm using the Vulkan renderer instead of the OpenGL one I'm using my GTX 980 Ti, I'm using the automatic setting for anisotropic filtering, frame rate limit turned off, I'm going to be rendering everything at 720p, that's the recommended setting, and I've also been told that these are the best settings to use, but we are going to mess around with them and see exactly how it goes. Okay, so let's actually load our game, and yep, I already pre-compiled most of this stuff, so we should load some of our shaders from the disk. As you can see, once we start loading through some of these menus, we are getting 30 FPS. Now this game is actually a 30 FPS game, so that is basically going to be our target for perfect emulation. You might also see that in the bottom left hand corner it will say compiling shaders. Uh, don't worry about that, that's literally just the pre-compiled shaders being added to the shaders that you saw previously loading. And as you can see, we have fully loaded into the menu and we are getting 13 FPS. Um, it, it's actually running a lot better than it was on the previous version. I'd get maybe 9 or 10 FPS in this menu. And also you must remember that this menu is very scene dependent as this desert scene is actually being rendered. It's not just a static video being played. So let's hit start and try to actually load into single player. Now, as you can see, we are going to compile some more shaders down in the bottom left hand corner here as soon as we load into game but um, yeah let's just load in and see exactly what our performance is like. So straight away you can see that everything is kind of rendering in correctly. In previous versions of this emulator we would see massive artifacting in all of these scenes because none of the graphics would be rendered correctly and in an even later version of this emulator they fixed some of the issues but all of the shrubbery and trees would not render correctly. Instead they would render as massive giant rectangular polygons and stuff like that and it was just kind of a mess. So we're getting 10 FPS which actually isn't terrible. In a version of this emulator about three months ago it got to this stage at this kind of performance but it would always crash right about now when they're coming across this boardwalk. So so far so good and whoa jumped up to 17 FPS that's actually pretty good 19, 22, 21 FPS but you can also see that there's a fairly massive shadow culling issue that's happening and we're also going to see some weird graphical issues once this text comes back. There, you can see it on screen. Um, please also note that when it says compiling shaders, that is basically the reason for the bad performance. Because, yeah, you see there, it dropped down to 5 FPS when we were compiling shaders. Because, in similar to CMU emulator, if you've ever used that emulator with any of my guides, you need a pre-compiled disk-based cache that the game loads some of its shaders and graphics from and that will actually help with your performance over time. I had ran this game a few times and I thought I had got most of the compiled shaders for these scenes but I must have missed a few. Um, yeah, let's just continue and see what performance is like once we get past this opening area. Now, as well as some major graphical glitches that you have most likely already noticed, the screen is quite dark in some areas, that's mostly due to some shading issues, you are also going to see some fairly massive audio issues in this game. It doesn't appear as if the audio emulation is anywhere near perfect, and I'm not saying that the graphics are anywhere near perfect. Uh, this game is in fact in the in-game section, so that means it's bootable, but it's definitely nowhere near playable right now. However, as you can see, a lot of the graphics are rendered correctly now. The shadows are a bit buggy. As you can see, our player character is on this train, and once they go past a certain distance away from the camera, all of the shadows are just going to completely disappear from view. 
and there you go as you can see uh once our player character has gone past a certain threshold all of the render shadows on screen are just completely gone from the scene now even though this game is actually quite old this is an xbox 360 and playstation 3 title the graphics actually sort of hold up like the face models and everything are and they're quite detailed and they're quite well done it just goes to show you that uh once you get all the rigging and stuff done on player models and player characters and all these NPCs, their faces are quite detailed. I'm actually quite excited to see what this game is going to look like once we can actually upsample it to 4K using this emulator. As you can see, we're getting not terrible performance. We're getting 16, 17, 18, 13 FPS at times. Um, so yeah, let's just skip this scene along. I'm going to speed up the footage and I'm going to actually get us into some gameplay. So I'm actually quite surprised so far by our actual performance. I wasn't expecting it to run even slightly close to this well, even on my 7700K system. As you can see, we're now in game and we're getting prompted to go to the saloon. We are getting in and around 5 FPS when looking at the town. We are getting fairly heavy graphical issues on the player character and we're getting in and around 11 and 12 FPS when we look out towards the desert. So we look back towards the town and we're getting 4 FPS. If we look down at the ground we get 18, 19 FPS, 20, 21. It does indeed seem like when we look back towards the town we are getting our worst possible performance. Let's try to go up these steps and out into the desert and see what our performance will go to. So we are generally sticking in and around 11 and 12 FPS. We can aim down sights, not too bad. Uh, you can see on the ground that we are getting pretty much a massive bubble of shadows around us. Um, I'm guessing this is some sort of shadow culling that uh, isn't allowing shadows to be drawn outside of that set radius. Now, climbing steps at 5 FPS isn't exactly one of my talents, so uh, once we get up the stairs, let's continue on into the town and see exactly what our performance is like. Yeah, we're gonna have to look at the ground in order to progress some of these scenes because our frame rate is absolutely tanking. Uh, when we look up, the game doesn't look too bad. We can see some glowing horses off in the distance. Uh, when we look up to the sky, yeah, it's pretty much the same story. If we look at the ground or the sky, we're getting the best performance. We should see some fairly massive shadow issues when we come into this house. Uh, once, yeah, as you can see, our, we're getting some absolutely crazy... Well, it's not that there's not shadows, there's, there's just too much light. Maybe it's an issue with the way they are culling the actual shadows. So let's take a look back up to the sky and try to proceed back to our target area. Yeah, looking, looking into the village, we're getting 4, maybe 5 FPS. If we turn around, it's 7, 8 FPS. So yeah, there are some fairly massive performance problems. Now, regardless of this, I do have some high hopes for this uh, this game on this emulator. As with other games like Demon Souls, they basically progressed in a very similar fashion with graphical and performance issues. And that game, Demon Souls, actually performs much better now on RPC S3 on my computer than it does on my PlayStation 3. And I'm basically rendering it at 4K resolution also. Other games like Persona 5 are also basically fully playable now on this emulator and they work at full speed and rendered at 4K or basically any resolution your graphics card can handle. Okay, so we're getting 10, 11 FPS in this rendered cutscene. I'm just going to speed the footage up through this cutscene and try get us back into some gameplay. So we are back in game with a moving NPC in front of us and we're getting basically the same performance regardless of what is on screen. We're getting 6 or 7 FPS when in the middle of the town looking out towards the desert or the train. And when we actually look into the town where the majority of the NPCs are, we're getting 4, 5 and 6 FPS. Now you'll also notice that when we look at the ground at the most oblique angle we possibly can with our camera, we're seeing kind of a dramatized effect of this shadow culling. Now I'm not sure why they have actually implemented this, maybe it is to uh, debug some graphical issues and see exactly what is affecting performance the most. Let's just try to mount our horse and continue along this mission. So as you can also see, these horses have some fairly horrendous and heavy graphical issues. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure horses aren't supposed to look like that. Now, you may also notice that there are some weird looking clouds in the sky. Now, they don't look bad. In fact, where the sun is, they look quite good. But when we look slightly off to the left, you can see that the clouds are actually completely missing all of their shaders on the back side of them. So it kind of makes them look kind of weird and flat for some reason. It's most likely just part of the process and it's probably just some shader level that they have disabled, but I thought I'd just point it out so uh, if we see improvement in this in uh, future versions of this emulator we can, we can see what exactly they have changed and what exactly they have improved. 
when we look up to the sky again you can see we're getting like 18 19 sometimes 20 fps but uh straight away when we look back to the uh to the desert or to the npc or player character we're getting fairly terrible performance back to 7 and 8 fps now that isn't to say that this is actually poor performance especially when you consider that this game didn't even use to boot and wouldn't go in game like this now even though the performance isn't terrible it's not great and i actually have never seen it go past this small section right here if we look just ahead of where my horse is right now to where the train is crossing i can almost guarantee you that once we cross it the emulator is going to seize up get a soft lock and we are not going to be able to proceed any further However, with basically every emulator, this is just the process in getting a game to actually work and be fully playable. As we have seen with games like Demon's Souls on RPCS3 and Breath of the Wild on CMU Emulator, soft locks like this are just part of the process, they're going to happen, and once they fix what exactly soft locks this exact situation, they'll move on to the next lock and fix whatever they can whenever they can. So, as you can see, the game has softlocked like I expected it to, and this basically brings an end to our performance showcase of this game running on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. Let me know down in the comments if there are any games you'd like me to take a look at, see exactly how they run, and see exactly what kind of performance and playability levels we can get out of them. So, as always guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.